the name. And the name is Jesus. The name is Jesus. The name is Jesus. There's no other name greater than the name. That's why we sing of grace. Lift them up. Lift them up above every situation. Every circumstance. There's no powers of darkness. I need you. I need you. 
but he's here to answer. Hallelujah. This is your moment. Hallelujah.
this is your moment ask of the lord and he shall grant you he is sovereign and he loves his children so much he loves you more than you can ever think of and when you ask don't doubt is here to answer your cry is here to wipe your tears thank you holy spirit thank you thank you jesus yes 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 oh his presence is heavy his presence is heavy
Please be seated. Give a great hand to the Lord. Come on, He deserves something great. Hallelujah. Are we blessed to be in the house of the Lord? Tell our neighbors, you are blessed. What did the Lord speak to us last week? Pardon? Oh. In faithfulness, what did the Lord speak to us about? Pardon? Our punctuality. That's one of it only. That's one part. There are many that the Lord spoke. Being faithful to his word. Right? That's also there. Pardon? Promises. Ah, keep your promises. When you make a vow, fulfill it. Because usually people only long to, you know, receive promises from God. But they forget the promises that they make to God. You say, you bless me, I bless you. Faithfulness. So, today we are going to see the next fruit that is gentleness the original greek word translated for gentleness or it's also been known in many other scriptures it's mentioned as in other translations as meekness you can choose whether you want to use gentleness or meekness that's your choice it doesn't make much of a difference because both of them go together. Say gentleness and meekness are together. You cannot separate it. You can never separate gentleness and meekness. They go hand in hand. They are together. First thing that I would like to say is Meekness is not weakness. Everyone say, meekness is not weakness. Because many people think being meek, humble, gentle is sort of a weakness of a person. It's not the weakness of a person. It's the solid character of a person. It's actually a divine character. That's why if you see in the life of our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ, he manifested meekness when he was walking in this world. Now I want you to picture, I'm sure all of us have come by aircraft, right? We all have had a flight, right? Experience, yes or no? Now which is the biggest one? Let's take, okay, Boeing 747 or 38? 380, A380, okay, A380. All of us have traveled in it? Yes or no? Okay. Now, when you travel, that flight, aircraft is so heavy, right? It's so heavy. But you see, it goes up, and especially when it's landing, how smooth that landing is. Do you feel discomfort when it's landing? Yes or no? Sometimes, huh? 
sometimes you find that depends on the pilot that is there but majority of the time you find the flight lands smoothly sometimes you know you are sleeping in the flight you don't even realize suddenly you hear the announcement we have landed please put on your seat belts we are we have landed wait for the sign to be on and then you can remove your seat belt right suddenly you'll get up from oh we landed how many of you have had that experience only i i sleep in the flight so we all have gone through that experience of we've seen some people sleeping and you know enjoying why in spite of that la- such heavy aircraft landing in that speed yet it is so gentle that this person who's sleeping never realizes it that is an example of meekness does it mean that the aircraft is bad it ex- the smoother the flight lands it shows the quality of that aircraft though it is so heavy it's made of metal and all this yet it is so smooth so this is a classic example of meekness we don't say that oh this aircraft is so bad it does i don't know how come it's not it probably there's an issue with the aircraft no but you have some aircraft when the moment they land it shakes the whole thing even your seat your everything starts shaking you will be looking on top why hope the cap, you know the baggage from top does not fall down yes or no the smaller the flight the greater the shake right the bigger the aircraft the smoother they land same way if you are a strong person if you are really a strong person you will never get upset for any small things you learn to handle things and situations as it comes by your side let's look to numbers 12 3 it's about moses an example of moses now the man what does it say now the man moses was very humble or meek you can mention more than all men on the face of the earth what a testimony about moses have any of us had this testimony has anyone said my god look at this man look at this woman look at this boy look at this girl how gentle they are how sweet what a sweet heart they are have you heard that people saying to you it's very difficult right and if they say so can that be persistent in your life or is it persistent in your life or only for that period of time or circumstance and situation but you look here god in the god himself the word itself declares moses was in all the face of the earth the most meekest man but if you look into the life of moses he was the most powerful guy in egypt he was so strong he had wisdom he had power he had authority he did great things for the pharaoh he was such a man in such a position to the extent he even killed an egyptian who was hitting an israelite do you know that yes or no now that though he had so much authority power and anything but that is not meekness but how did moses acquire this meekness or his gentleness the answer is by submitting to god 
his life. At the age of 40, Moses was all ready to deliver his people Israel. He came, he saw, he was so angry that his people were being tormented. They were being pushed and so much of labor upon them. They were pressurized. Even today, many of us in our companies, we are pushed around. We have, you know, put so much of pressure you go, you sometimes you don't feel like going to office. You'll be wondering, oh, another day I have to go to office. Why? Because of the pressure and the way your superiors treat you. Or it's vice versa. Probably your colleagues will be thinking, oh, yo, should I go to office today? Moses is there. He is so tough guy. Or we see Pharaoh. Some of us behave like Pharaoh. Taskmasters. Some of us Pharaoh's taskmasters. We want to be so tough. We think by being tough with our colleagues, we are in a greater position. It's not so in the sight of God. In the sight of God, that's not what is excellent. God had to send him to wilderness. You know what happened the moment he realized that they saw him killing and this Israelite said, oh, we, you killed that Egyptian. And the moment he, they told him, what did he do? He ran away from there because he knew his life is at stake. But he did with a good intention. His intention was how could you Behave like that with my people Israel. He wanted to show his power and authority over this person. He thought he could, in his own ability, try to save the children of Israel. Many of us try to be like that, like Moses. We think that with our authority and power that we are able to do many things. God had to send him for 40 years. He went into the wilderness and he was with his father-in-law, Jethro. What was he taking care of? A man who built great structures was tending to sheep, the flocks of Jethro. It took 40 years for God to unwind this man. To break Power, that wisdom, that authority, all that he had in him. It took 40 years for God to break this man. You say, God, wait, God can't do it? Yes, God can do it, snap of his finger. But that's not the way God works. God's way is enabling you to understand your weaknesses. And he wants you to realize your shortcomings. And he wants to remove little by little so that you will surrender completely to him and say, God, I cannot do it without you. He waits for you to depend upon him and allow him to work on your life. As long as you don't surrender your ways to him and expect him to deal with you, God will not move. God had to wait for Moses to break down. All that knowledge and all that puff, everything that he had, it had to be melted down. It took almost 40 years. So probably from the time he was, say, 18 onwards, he must have been in a position with the Pharaoh. So 18 to 80, that is 62 years totally, the lifespan of Moses, it took God to break him. Today, 
How many of us are willing to, we say we submit our life to God. Lord, I surrender. I surrender all. Really, do you surrender everything to God? You sing that song. We sing that song. I surrender all. Do you really surrender? Here took Moses this long time. He was operating in his own strength. Many of us are operating in our own strength even today. And as long as we operate in our own strength, we don't give room to God to work. As long as we, we try to do things in our own way, we don't give room for God to work in our lives. In the 40th chapter of Isaiah, it says that God increases strength to them who have no strength. The day you say, Lord, I'm nothing. I am absolutely nothing. I'm empty. I cannot even lift this Bible without your grace and your favor. When you come to that brokenness, and when you come to that understanding that even the very breath that we are breathing is not my own ability. Your lungs might be functioning well. Your, all your organs might be functioning well. It is because of his grace. It's not your ability. How many of us can say that I'm living today and walking is because of my own ability? We even forget the fact, the truth. We don't even realize how our being is being created. How we are existing. We think this is, yes, it's part of life. We think it's, yes, but how is it happening? Have you ever tried to sit and think about it? How am I alive and kicking around? How am I breathing? When a child is born, who teaches a child to breathe? When you're born, who taught you to breathe? Who taught you to walk? Your first steps, the very first step you take, your parents, we are, they all are so excited, right? Or the first cry. Who, who enabled you to cry? Who helped you? We forget the one that gave us this very breath and taught us to breathe. That's almighty God. And we think, as we grow, we think it's our ability. We think it's all by my own self. What do I am? I go, I take up dumbbells, I do push-ups, I go to gym, I do everything. Oh, I, I do all this thing. Do you think it's our ability? Nothing is of our ability. We forget God. That is life. That's what the world is all about. Same thing was with Moses. He thought he knew everything. He thought he was excellent. He thought he was, he was capable of setting the people of Israel free. But he had to break down. Many times we think, why are things not falling in place for me? Because it's your effort. It is you who are doing things and you expect God to bless you. That's why dependency on God, how much is it? And God waits for it. He waits for our dependency upon him. Hebrews 11.27. And how do we do that? How, do, how can it take place? When Moses was in the desert, whom did he have in the wilderness? Whom did he look at to? Who was there to encourage him? Only the sheep and goats. <laughs> he could only hear the sounds and the cows moving and the goats. There was no one to encourage him. But he had something that was deposited in his life. Hebrews 11.27 
It says, by faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. The moment he came to know who he was and from where he is, something happened in his spirit. That's why he became so zealous and he wanted to set the people free. He could not withstand the hardship his people, children of Israel were going through Pharaoh. But till then, it was okay for him. They were slaves, like slaves to the Pharaoh. It did not matter him. But the time he began to know who he is and who his God was and who his people is, a fire began to burn in him. And that fire took him out. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Took him out to the wilderness. If you see even the life of Jesus, he was driven by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness. Jesus also portrayed 100% human. He was 100% God and 100% human. And we see here the Holy Spirit taking him and going into the wilderness. 40 days he was in the wilderness. And we see Moses here 40 years in the wilderness. You see the children of Israel 40 years again in the wilderness. They had to be broken. They had to be broken. Moses saw him who was unseen. He kept his eyes on God all through those 40 years in the desert. By faith, the word of God says, by faith. Do we see God in by faith? Do we take our situations to God in faith? Not of what, no matter what it is, every day we are called to depend and go into the presence of God. Every day what we do, we tell our children always, when you begin to study, ask the help of the Holy Spirit. Seek the help of the Holy Spirit. Whatever you do, ask the help of the Holy Spirit. Why we tell them? Because we experience, we know what it is to depend on the Holy Spirit. Because the word of God says, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. So the more we learn to depend, and God is there to help us in every aspect of our life. You know, we have put conditions, terms and conditions with God. We decide what God can do and what God cannot do. What God should do and what God should not do. Where God should be involved and where God should not be involved. We take the decisions. We tell God where we want him and which part of our life we want him. Well, we are supposed to surrender every aspect of our life to him. When asked, what does God have to do in us to produce gentleness or meekness? How can, how can I be like that? How can, how can it be done? How can I be gentle? Like this aircraft. How can I be? David understood the secret. David understood the secret. In Psalm 51, 17 he says, The sacrifices of God are a broken. Can everyone read? The sacrifices of God are a Broken spirit and a, a broken and a contrite heart. These are God you will not despise. 
broken heart. <laughs> Pastor, failure. Oh, that man ditched me. He said he loves me. Oh, my heart is broken. Oh, Pastor, that girl, she said my heart is broken. Then put on Elton John. Sacrifice that song. Cold, cold heart. And then tears. No eating, no sleeping. I don't want food. I don't want this. I don't want to see anybody's face. I don't want to talk to anybody. Broken heart. Or parents say something immediately. How could they say that? I'm, I'm so disturbed. I'm so broken. Someone says something to you, broken. This is all flesh. We have to learn to die to this brokenness of this world. And allow God to literally break that heart of yours which is a stone. You know why you feel all this is because your heart is of stone. It's not flesh. Because these are all connected to the things of the flesh and whatever is connected to the things of the flesh only is because the heart is hard towards God. When your heart is hard towards God you find all these things in your life. But when your heart is of flesh, it becomes, starts beginning to become sensitive to the Holy Spirit and to the voice of God. We are called to be sensitive to the voice of God. That's why David knew it. David understood that. He said, God, I know one thing. A broken spirit and a broken and a contrite heart is what you will never, never push away. Nor will you ever ignore it. And this was David's prayer. It was in the midst of his prayer that he was doing this. It was his prayer to God. You know when? When he messed up with Bathsheba. And the prophet came and told him. He began to cry. And towards the end of that verse 51, verse 17, he says this out. The kind of sacrifice that God is looking for us, in us today is not bullocks or your finance, money or a sheep or an altar, but it's something deep down inside each one of us, a broken spirit. Another thing is we have spiritual pride. It's very dangerous. I know it all. I'm better than other person. It's a spiritual pride. It's not of a broken spirit. A broken spirit will say, you are better than me. A broken spirit will always give room for others and say, you take it. You do it. I'm there to back you up. I'm there to support you. That is the heart, a broken spirit. A haughty spirit always wants to be prominent and always considers themselves better than others. That's why the word of God says pride goes before the fall. There's a great difference between a surrendered will and a broken spirit. A surrendered will says, I'm going to do God's will no matter what it costs. How many of us said, Lord, I, will, I only want to do your will. No matter what happens, I'm going to stand for you firm. I'm going to do only your will. How many have said it? Many of us, right? Only I said it. I think I keep saying, Lord, I want to do your will. But when you begin to do God's will, you realize it's not according to your taste or your ways. You suddenly start feeling it very difficult. 
because it's not according to your taste. Because outside it all looks fancy. Oh, I want to be pastor. Lord, I will do anything. Oh, Lord, I want to be evangelist. I want to be an apostle. I want to be a prophet. I want to be a preacher. I want to do this. I want to be that. I want to be a worship leader. I want to be a musician. I want all beautiful. But when that commitment is told and when you have to fall in line with the principles what God wants you to do the way he wants it, you begin to feel difficult. But know what you do? I made a commitment. Now I have no choice. So I have to be part of the team. I said, what people will think now? Because people will think, you made a commitment, now what will people think about me? So you come to do your duty. Biting your teeth. Inside you're having a battle. There's a fight that's going within you. Outside, oh, hallelujah, praise God. Oh, yes, brother, yes, sister. Did you pray today? Did you pray yesterday? Oh, yes, yes, yes. How many hours you prayed? Did you read the word? Oh, yeah, I read, I read. With great difficulty, you push yourself. Because... It's not according to you. Because people think it's fancy, it's easy. Come preach, okay. Doing ministry is easy. That's why many people are lost. And there's a battle going within themselves. What a mistake I did. What to do now? But you need to come. Part of the flock. And what happens even the same thing. The team also will become like that. Get up early. How many did you get up and pray for two hours? Did you pray in tongues? Have you spent time with God? Yes, yes, yes. That yes, only God knows. Getting up itself is, oh, so difficult to get up. Ministry is not something that is to be played around. It's serious business. To your earthly jobs, you give so much of accountability. You give so much of attention and seriousness that you put an effort you put in your earthly job. At least 10% of it do you put for God's kingdom? Do you? First, uh, one day only I get to sleep. Let me sleep. You're asking me to get up at 5 o'clock and pray. But till 2 o'clock, you're fine. You're happy. You can watch anything. You can do anything. Go out, drive, come, everything till 2 o'clock. You're no problem. But when it comes to get up early morning and pray, come together and pray, Oh, it's difficult, so difficult. Pastor, don't worry, I'm in, in spirit, I'm in agreement with you. Brother, in spirit, I'm in agreement with you. Eddie, brother Eddie, no problem, I'm in agreement with you in the spirit. What spirit? God alone knows. If you cannot be together physically, You can never ever be together in the spirit. That's what the word of God says. If you cannot love the one whom you see, how can you love the one whom you have not seen? It all begins one to one. That's why. And fellowship. Fellowship with one another. With what? With songs and hymns. We have a battle within us and we still remind ourselves and say, I'm going, I'm going to do God's will. We may confirm outwardly, but inwardly there's still opposition to the will of God. 
I'm reminded of a story of a little boy in church who was sitting beside his father and kept standing up in the pew. Every time the kid gets up and wants to stand up. First time he did, dad quietly pulled him. Second time he did, again the dad pulled him down. Third time he did, dad gave him a whack and pulled him down and held his hand hard. This boy sat and then he looks at his dad. He gives a stare to his dad. <laughs> Old man, you think I'm, I'm obeyed? No, no, no. I might be sitting, but I'm inside, I'm looking out. From inside, I'm still doing what you have asked me not to do. I am rebellious. Outward is sitting, but inside, his thought is, you think you got me? No, you haven't got me. I'm still doing what I have to do. I am rebellious. Many of us are in this condition. Check your own self. Check. Let's, let's ask the Holy Spirit to search us and see the areas of our rebelliousness. When you begin to seek, you yourself will be ashamed of what you are in the presence of God. I have done this search. And every day I'm doing this. I'm asking the Holy Spirit every day, show me your God. Because as long as this flesh is alive, it will try its best to put you down. As long as this flesh is alive, it will always try to strive against the Spirit. Because there's nothing good in this flesh. But we still want to obey the flesh. My flesh is weak, but I'm strong in the spirit. It's impossible. If we don't learn to put the flesh to death, your spirit will keep struggling every day. God had to take Moses. 40 years for Moses. Ask the Holy Spirit. The difference between a surrendered will and a broken spirit is a broken spirit does not react. It does not fight back. It does not back answer. It does not justify itself but it makes room for the Holy Spirit to work. <laughs> Back answering. Search ourselves. You know why we do this? Because actually, you are weak. Because you're weak, you are scared. You feel that you're going to, you'll be rejected. So you want to show yourself. <laughs> Hello? I'm not, I'm not a weakling. You begin to shout. Why? To sh Actually, when you shout, it's your weakness. When people shout, it shows their weakness. It shows their insecurity. It reveals that they are insecure. They keep shouting and yelling. Why? Insecurity. They feel that they will lose something. So they want to hold it by force. So they, they throw their tantrums. Why? Insecurity. That they may lose something. 
They think it is the strength. It is the weakness. I will close with this testimony of a teen. Actually two teens. One is a teen came to me and said I'm having a lot of problems with my mother and I have a real problem relationship with my mother. And every time the mother scolded, asked what happened, every, it says every time my mom starts shouting at me or demand to do something, I back answer, I try to justify myself. And we end up with arguments, shouting at each other, and then go away and don't speak. And this has been going on every day. Then I had to explain to this person, say, listen, we have to learn to respect our parents. That's what the word of God says. Honor your father and mother and that there's a commanded blessing. How do I come out of it, is it? First, just take that issue to God. Surrender to God. And ask God to first deal with you. I always pray for my mother. I pray that God, Lord, you deal with my mother. I said, stop praying for your mother. Start praying for yourself. First ask Lord to deal with you. Lord, deal with me. Help me to understand my mother. Teach me to honor and respect her as per your word. Then I spoke to the mother. I am a mother. I... I am so and so's mother. I am the mother. I have all the rights. Pastor, this, that. I said, listen. You have all the rights. Have you prayed? Yeah, I pray that God change him. I said, stop praying. That God change my child. Ask the Lord to deal with you first. Lord, change me. Help me to understand my child. Help me to love him the way you want me to love him. Because he's your inheritance. Teach me to bring him up your ways. I don't know. I don't know how to bring. I don't know how to handle this child. You give me that grace. You give me that wisdom. Teach me, oh God. And after a month, this child comes to me and says, Pastor, I've learned to be cool. Whenever mom gets upset or says anything, I stop back and sorry. I started blessing my mother. And what happened? The whole situation in two, three months, the house changed. Today they love each other so much. There was another daughter who came. She came to the church. And that was actually supposed to be the last visit. Probably the first and the last visit to the church. She decided to give away her life. She decided she wants to finish up her life. Because she had a real tough time with the father. Very tough time with the father. But when she came to the house of God, the Lord spoke to her. She was weeping and weeping and weeping. So what should I do? I said, learn to love your father. Forgive him, release him, bless him. Every morning go to and say, Papa, I love you. Every morning go and just give him a hug. No, he doesn't like me to touch him also. I said, it's okay, you still go. Say, if he pushes you, I will say, Papa, I still love you. She started exercising this faithfully. The father broke. 
she stopped arguing with the dad she stopped fighting with the dad she stopped asking everything that she was doing rebelliously she stopped she started loving her dad saying dad i love you it hit the father in such a manner he did not know what happened it came to a stage that suddenly he started getting up before his daughter gets up goes to a room knocks and says darling i love you and every morning a rose was given to the daughter every morning a rose was given by the father to the daughter the one that was about to finish her life her whole life changed by just obedience by just obedience when you are broken when you humble yourself and ask the help of the holy spirit you will see his goodness flowing in you but the holy spirit will not move till you ask for the help till you ask for the help but when you ask him for help he is more than willing so as i close i just want to share two important things how you can have this broken heart and a broken and a contrite spirit how we can have it one is the way Moses chose one is through a gradual process like Moses 40 years in the desert or the other is through crisis like David in other words when you are having challenges go to God's presence and cry out to him and say God deal me change my heart to oh God David said change my heart to make it new take not thy spirit away from me when you go and cry out to him he gives you a new heart he helps you and he brings that contrite and broken spirit in you he will make it he will help you to be that and he will help that hard hearted stone to turn into flesh that hard heart can be broken by the help of the holy spirit dear saints of god i just want to ask you this one question Will you give God the permission to work in your broken spirit so that the true gentleness and true meekness be the portion of our life and we see this manifest in the life of Jesus though they though he knew everything even when he was just at the age of 12 he was talking to the Pharisees he was talking in the temple the high priest he was talking and discussing with them but yet you see him he walked in the midst of everybody with all humility he could have said hey you know who i am i am the son of god jante mai kon hai mere baap kon hai you know Jesus could have said that but he revealed the character the nature of God to you and me so that we may be like him and thanks be to God that he has given us his spirit who is in you with you and upon you always ready to work 
in you to manifest that meekness so that people see Christ in you, their hope. It's not by shouting and fighting and showing your muscles and who you are and your position. It's the more humble that we are. No problem. I always tell my wife, no matter what, people want to climb on me, let them stamp me, let them do what they want. I submit all of them to God. One thing that the Holy Spirit taught me is anything, anybody says anything, just submit to Him. Live it to God. He knows what is best. Our responsibility is to bless those who come against us. To love our enemies. To forgive them, those who have done harm against us. To let go so that He can go with us wherever we go. So that Christ alone is glorified. The church, the body of Christ has to manifest this fruit of gentleness because it's a character of God and if we are called as the sons of God if you and I take up that position as sons and daughters of the most high God this should be a priority in our life learning to walk in gentleness, learning to walk in meekness. As the Son of God Himself walked on this earth, so should you and I, shall we rise up. Next week, I'll be sharing on self-control. Thank you, Lord. Let's close our eyes. If you believe that the Lord has spoken to you, I want all eyes closed. All eyes closed. All eyes closed. If you believe the Spirit of God has spoken to you, raise your hands to God and say, God, I am that person. I need your help. I need to be more gentle. I need to be gentle as you want me to be. I want that fruit to be manifested in my life. I need to have that meekness in my life. I need to have that meekness in my life. Let all this pride and this ego and all these things be taken away. As you were in this earth, help me to be like that, oh God. So that people, when they see me, oh God, may they see the fruit of yours. And your word says, you shall know them by their fruit. Help me to bear this fruit in my life, oh God. Teach me, Holy Spirit. So that I may be a testimony unto mankind. And that Jesus alone be glorified. And Jesus alone be glorified. Break whatever has to be broken in my life. Take away what has to be taken away from my life. And add what you want to add in my life. Whatever has to be added, you add, O oh God. 
And whatever has to be taken away, you take it to God. I ask this in Jesus' name. And as we are standing, and as our hands are raised up, as the Spirit of God is moving in this place, I thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, Shaka Leberanto Rosikide. Even those who are on Zoom, in your room right now, the presence of God is working. He is here to touch you. Oh, Shabarida Paranto. Oh, Kableka Sakatata Paranto Rashide. I thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, Shabrikite. I thank you for the fire of yours right now into the lives of your people. May they experience your power and your presence, Holy Spirit. And as they have committed, I pray, God, let everything that is unwanted be burst out in Jesus' name. Now, in Jesus' name. Everything be burst out by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Everything be purged out. Whatever has to be broken, let it be broken right now in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. And what has to be added, Holy Spirit, fill. Fill them with that love of yours. Let it overflow. The peace of yours. That's about all understanding. And in all the meeknesses, I thank you that you be their strength. You be their strength. Nah. Nah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for what you're doing in their lives. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord, Church. So um, I asked you all to pray last week for my visa to come earlier. And it did come. It came on Friday. My passport came home. So praise God. My parents are very relieved. Um, I just wanted to say thank you all for praying for me. And also do keep me in your prayers as I go to Canada. Shall we receive the blessing? The grace of our Lord and sweet Jesus Christ, love the Father and sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of us now and forever. Amen. And all the children of God say, praise the Lord.